Hey everybody, today we're gonna talk about the Battle of the Thermics. Well, on the left side we have the really exothermic competitor. It is hot, it is getting out there, it is throwing all the punches. Boom! And on the right side we have the really chilled, the really relaxed endothermic. It's like, yo man, I'm just chilling. Poop, block the punch. Poop, poop, block another punch. But I'm chill. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Exothermic and endothermic processes. That's right. Exothermic, y'all may know, it's like when you become an exothermic process, when you touch it, it's gonna be like, boom. Muy caliente, super hot. But when you like touch an endothermic process, it's gonna, ooh, it's cold, bro. Ooh, yeah, that's right. So let's get down to it. An example of an exothermic process is something that you boys like to do. Burn, yeah, light things on fire, and watch it go up in flames. Now what is that? Burning is basically a chemical reaction that releases a lot of heat, an exothermic process. Okay, so an example of a burning or the mother of all burning is combustion. Stuff that you all like to do, boys especially. Combustion, a very fast and burning or exothermic process. An example of that is methane. Methane and oxygen get carbon dioxide, heat, and water. Alright? Now, heat is just nothing but a byproduct of a chemical reaction. It doesn't really have to be that, but I'm just writing it down there because I am showing to y'all that it is an exothermic process. What about another example of burning? Hmm. You guys like to go out camping? You guys have a grill, grilled a burger when you're out there camping? <clears throat> You know that little tank that you got? Now that's a propane, little portable propane tank. And propane is nothing but a fuel source. And what you're gonna do with it is we're gonna burn it, and when it reacts with oxygen, it's gonna get, come, make carbon dioxide, heat, and water. All right? And that heat is gonna grill and cook your burgers. What about another example of burning? Hmm, uh, what's powering all these electricity out here? Hmm, at least for us, it's powered by coal-fired power plants. Coal is nothing but a carbon source. Here we go, carbon. Now we mix carbon and oxygen, what you're gonna get is carbon dioxide and heat. Heat is gonna boil lots of water in a big old tank, and a it's gonna create steam. The steam is gonna turn some big old turbine, which is something like a rotating uh, wheel. And that rotating wheel is gonna move a part in a generator, and you're gonna generate electricity. All right, so here's burning. Burning needs three things. Remember that. One, oxygen. You need oxygen source, okay? It's two a fire source or spark source to ignite, start the chemical reaction. And three, a fuel source, like carbon, coal, propane, methane. That's what you need. What about all the examples of burning? Hmm. Back in the, uh, whatever, 19th hundreds or something, some guy, I think a German guy, made a blip. You know what a blip is, right? Those little round things that fly in the air? Now, he filled that blimp with hydrogen gas. And he said, well, hydrogen gas is really, really light compared to air, so the blimp rose and flowed up. And it did, very nicely. And it started swooping around Europe or Germany or something like that, right? But what happened is that something bad happened. The, the material
material got cracked open and the material somehow sparked, sparked up. That means you got the fire source. But suddenly what happened was all the hydrogen gas in there started getting to react with the spark source and the oxygen to form a chemical reaction. The whole balloon caught in fire and it like crashed. So that is an example of burning. Hydrogen plus oxygen gives up water and heat. What about another example of an exothermic process? Huh. When you throw a piece of uh, reactive metal, group one metals like potassium, why don't you do this? Open a YouTube tab and search for potassium and water. And what you're going to see is that if the potassium metal is small enough, some professor or teacher threw it onto a beaker of water, you're going to see that little potassium piece jump around on the surface of the water and it may spark a little fire source. Why is that? Because when you mix potassium with water, you get potassium hydroxide and hydrogen and heat. And because this heat is so exothermic, it can ignite the hydrogen gas that's released. But if it's like a big old piece of potassium and someone threw it into a lake or something like that, what's going to happen is that you're going to see it fizzing, smoke's going to like come out and boom, the water is all going to splash everywhere. Yep. And finally, last example of an exothermic process is camping food or military packed food. You guys may have seen this, but packed food contains a vessel that when you destroy one of the protective layer, it will release a chemical that will mix with water and a reaction will occur. The inside that vessel is calcium oxide. When you break that vessel, it's going to react with water and you're going to get calcium hydroxide and heat. That heat is going to warm up or heat up your food. Alright, moving on to exo endothermic. Endothermic is when process is when heat from the environment gets into the substance. For example, if you're eating candy, when you touch a piece of candy, you don't feel like much. It's maybe a little cold, but when you put it in your mouth, your mouth has saliva. It's gonna dissolve the citric acid and the sodium bicarbonate make acids and alkali. And when you mix acids and alkali, you're going to have a neutralization reaction. You're going to get form sodium citrate, water, and carbon dioxide. What that's going to do is that it is going to feel cold. That's why when you eat candy, it feels cold. And that, my friends, is an endothermic reaction. Now, there's still a lot of endothermic reaction examples of that. So, but there are endothermic processes. For example, dissolving salt in water. Healthy salt, potassium chloride, when you dash it in water, touch the cup or the beaker, and it's going to feel cold. Or when you get injured on a training exercise or running or something, or you spring in like a joint. You may put an ice pack on yourself. Now, some ice pack don't require you to put it in the refrigerator or the cooler or the chiller. You just twist it and you're gonna break a vessel and the vessel is gonna dissolve into water and it's gonna feel cold. That chemical in the vessel is usually ammonium nitrate. When you dissolve ammonium nitrate in water, you're gonna get endothermic process. And finally, the classical example of all endothermic process is ice melting. Heat is absorbed into the ice and it melts. And that's why when you put your hands around there, it's going to feel like cold air. So there we go. Exo and endo. I hope you appreciate the processes. 
and have a good one.